Hello everybody. Welcome back to NIOS Made Easy. Today we are solving a previous year board paper from social science. This is from April 2019. Let's quickly look at the question paper pattern. You have four one mark questions. Then you have four two mark questions. Then you have 17 four mark questions. And finally you have four five mark questions. Let's get started. The one mark questions are multiple choice questions. The first question, who among the, who among the following invented the flying shuttle? The flying shuttle was invented by John Hayes. That is option C. The next question, the constitution of independent India was adopted on 26 January 1950. The answer is option C. The third question, who among the following appoints the governor of the states in India? The answer is president. The president appoints the governor of the states in India. Fourth question. When did the parliament of India pass the right to education act? The parliament of India passed the right to education act in 2009. The correct answer is A, 2009. Now we are moving on to two more questions. The answer that is written here is quite elaborate. You can cut it short to suit your needs. Ideally speaking, you should be able to at least write five to six points for a two mark answer in, in a history paper. What changes were made in the revenue collection during the reign of Akbar? This is from chapter two, medieval world. The answer is the Mughal empire was based on the surplus of agricultural produce of the peasants. This was extracted in the form of revenue. During the Mughal time, particularly during the reign of Akbar, far-reaching changes were made in the system of revenue collection. Land was measured and land revenue was fixed according to the area of the land. The fertility of the land was also taken into account before fixing the land revenues. The cash revenue of the produce was calculated according to the prevailing market prices and the revenue was fixed in cash accordingly. The state encouraged the payment of revenue in cash. This was a period of commercialization of agriculture and the state encouraged cash crop production. The state also took a lot of interest in the extension of cultivation into zones which were previously uncultivated or they were forest areas. The state also advanced to peasants loan as well as revenue relief in times of crop failure. The next question. This answer is a short answer. Mention any two monuments of Mughal architecture. The monuments of the Mughal period reflect a deep sense of fusion and assimilation of Indo-Islamic styles. The monuments in Fatehpur Sikri like the Panch Mahal, Birbal's Palace, Ibadat Khana as well as the tomb of Humayun in Delhi, Akbar's tomb in Sikandra, Itmatu Daula's tomb in Agra, and the Taj Mahal. These are some of the examples of Mughal architecture. They have asked you to mention any two monuments. There are a couple of monuments given here and you can choose any two of them. The next question. Explain the meaning of mango shards. This is from the chapter 10 that is climate from the section 10.3. Towards the close of the summer season, pre-monsoon showers are common in South India, especially in Kerala and Karnataka. They help in the early ripening of mangoes and hence these showers are referred to as mango showers. Question 8. Mention any two qualifications for election as the president in India. This is from chapter 20, governance at the union level. Qualifications for the election as a president. In order to be qualified for election as a president, a person must be a citizen of India. He should have completed the age of 35 years should be qualified for being elected as a member of the House of the People, that's the Loka Sabha. One should not hold any office of profit under the government of India or any state government or any other local authority or any other authority of the said government. These are the qualifications required for the election as the President of India. The next question, question 9. Describe the town planning of the Indus Valley Civilization. This is a four mark question. 
This is from the first chapter, Ancient World. The first urban societies in South Asia were seen in the Indus Valley Civilization. The people here lived in well-planned cities. A general feature of the cities was the presence of a fort which housed the public buildings. The city had wide roads which cut each other at right angles. The houses were brick houses and they were mostly two-storied buildings. There were wells, baths, drains and sewage in each house. The roads were paved and street lightings were also known. Apart from the living houses in the lower town, big multi-pillared halls have also been discovered at the citadel area in Mohenjo-daro. The most striking feature is the Great Bath. This bathing pool is 39 feet long, 23 feet wide and 8 feet deep. The Great Granary of Harappa was also another important building. The surplus produced by the peasants was stored here. Question 10. Who founded the Brahmo Samaj? Mention any three principles of the Brahma Samaj. This is chapter 6. Religious and Social Awakening in Colonial India. The Brahmo Samaj was founded by Raja Ram Mohan Roy in 1828. The main principles were Sati system was made illegal and it was punishable. Encouragement of widow remarriage and they condemn child marriage. This answer can be expanded a little more to add like 2-3 more points. Question number 11. Explain the impact of British trade on Indian handloom weaving industry. This is from chapter 5. Impact of British rule on India, economic, social and cultural. Indian handloom had a big market in Europe. With the coming of industrialization in England, the textile industry there made great progress. There was now a reverse of direction of, of textile trade between Britain and India. There was a massive import of machine-made clothes from English factories to the Indian markets. This increased the threat for the handicraft industries as the British goods were sold at a much cheaper price. The British succeeded in selling their goods at a cheap price as foreign goods were given free entry in, in India without paying any duty. On the other hand, Indian handicrafts were heavily taxed when they were sent out of the country. Therefore, because of this, within a few years, India from being an exporter of clothes became an exporter of raw cotton and became an importer of British clothes. This reversal made a huge impact on the Indian handloom weaving industry, leading to its collapse. It also created unemployment for a large community of weavers. Many of them migrated to rural areas to work on their lands as agricultural laborers. This in turn put increased pressure on the rural economy and livelihood. The next question, explain the impact of the revolt of 1857 on India. This is again from chapter 5, impact of British rule on India. The revolt of 1857 brought an end to the East India Company's rule, along with changes in the British policy towards the Indian states. One of the important impacts or outcomes of the revolt was that it gave rise to nationalism. Indian people became more aware of their heroes who sacrificed their lives for the country so that others might live in free India in times to come. The revolt, however, scarred the relationship between Hindus and Muslims with the divide and rule policy that was adopted by the British. They felt that if they wanted to continue their rule in India, it was important to divide the Hindus and Muslims. So this was the impact of the revolt of 1857 on India. The next question, question 13. Describe any four characteristics of the cold weather season in India. This is from chapter 10, climate. The duration of the cold weather season is from December to February in India. The temperature decreases from the south to the north. December and January are the coldest months and the average temperature in North India is 12 degrees to 15 degrees, whereas in South India it is 25 degrees. Frost is common in North and Northwest India. There is a light rainfall in this region due to Western disturbances. Higher slopes of the Himalayas experience snowfall. During the winter season, 
नॉर्थ ईस्ट ट्रेड विंड्स प्रिवेल ओवर इंडिया दे ब्लो फ्रॉम द लैंड टू द सी हेंस फॉर मोस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री इट्स अ ड्राई सीजन हवेवर द तमिलनाडु कोस्ट रिसीव विंटर रेनफॉल ड्यू टू दीज विंड्स ए पार्ट ऑफ द नॉर्थ ईस्ट ट्रेड विंड्स ब्लोज ओवर बे ऑफ बेंगाल दे गैदर मॉइस्चर विच कॉजेस रेनफॉल इन द कोस्टल तमिलनाडु वाइल द रेस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री रिमेन्स ड्राई इन द नॉर्दर्न पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री द वेदर इज मार्क बाय क्लियर स्काई लो टेम्परेचर्स एंड लो ह्यूमिडिटी क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन Explain the various geographical conditions required for the cultivation of tea. This is chapter twelve, agriculture in India. Some of the geographical conditions for the growth of tea are as follows. The first is temperature. It requires a hot and wet climate. The ideal temperature for the growth of tea bushes and leaves varies from twenty degrees to thirty degrees. If the temperature either raises above thirty-five degrees or goes below ten degrees, it would be harmful for the growth of tea bushes. The second is rainfall. As mentioned above, tea requires a good amount of rainfall, ranging from one fifty to three hundred centimeters, and the annual rainfall should be well distributed throughout the year. Long dry spell is harmful for tea. The third geographical condition is soil. Tea bushes grow well in well-drained, deep, and friable loamy soil. However, virgin forest soils rich in humus and iron content are considered to be the best soils for tea plantations. Tea is a shade-loving plant and it grows better when planted along with shady trees. The next question, question fifteen, highlight the various factors with examples that affect the population change of the country. Population of any country increases or decreases because of three main demographic factors. First, it's the birth rate, the death rate, and migration. A number of socio-economic factors influence the birth rate and death rate, which ultimately affect the population change. However, you may find that in our country, the main reason for rapid increase in population is the high birth rate and the low death rate. Migration as a factor has rather negligible influence on population growth at a national level however it has influence at a local or a regional level the next question question 16 mention any four sources of income of the municipal corporation this is from chapter 18 local governments and field administration some of the sources of income are as follows income from taxes Municipal corporation imposes taxes on various items like the house tax, entertainment tax, tax on holdings, advertisements, registration fees, tax on building plans, etc. Other fees and charges are collected as well. These include water supply charges, electricity charges, sewage charges, license fees from shopkeepers, toll taxes, etc. Grants in aid. state government and union government provides aids for various projects and programs related to development finally income from rents corporations rent out their properties and they get rent for various shops kiosks community centers etc for fairs marriages and exhibitions question number 17 differentiate between pressure groups and interest groups this is chapter 21 political parties and pressure groups pressure group is an interest group which exerts pressure on the government for decision making to fulfill their interests whereas interest groups are organized groups where people seek to promote their specific interests pressure groups to achieve their objectives and goals employ various techniques and methods which includes appeals petitions demonstrations picketing lobbying processions etc whereas interest groups they are well organized they have common interests and the members of these organized groups seek to attain protect and promote their interests for which they are united an interest group that exerts pressure on the government is called as a pressure group interest groups interest groups that do not exert pressure on the government is an interest group all pressure groups are interest groups while all interest groups need not be pressure groups this is a differentiate between question so it's a good idea to create a table and put the differences inside the table question 
Describe any four functions of gram panchayats. This is chapter 18, local governments and field administration. All the major functions of the gram panchayat are related to the welfare and development of the village. With a view to fulfill the needs and requirements of the villagers, every gram panchayat has to perform some important functions such as provision of safe drinking water, paving of streets, developing and maintaining a good drainage system, ensuring cleanliness of the villages, upkeep of the street lights, dispensary, etc. These functions are all called as obligatory functions. Some other functions are discretionary, which are also performed by the Gram Panchayat, if the Panchayat has resources and funds. These are plantation of trees, setting up and maintenance of insemination center for cattle, developing and maintaining playground for sports and setting up and running libraries from time to time. Some other functions can also be assigned to the panchayats by the state government or the union government. Question 19. What are the importance of elections in a democracy? Explain. This is a four mark question from chapter 22. People's participation in the democratic process. Election provides opportunities to the people to participate actively in the functioning of the democratic government. These are the most important expressions of public opinion as these enable the people to express their will. Elections widen the scope of political awakening amongst the masses and educate them by familiarizing them with issues of public concern. Elections facilitate peaceful transfer of power from one political party or one group of political parties to another and legitimize the working of the government by justifying the authority of representatives to lead people. The next question, question 20. Another is the main features of the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1992. This is from Chapter 18, Local Governments and Field Administration. The main features of the Act are Establishment of a three-tier structure, the village panchayat, the intermediate panchayat and the district panchayat. Regular elections every five years, reservation of seats for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Not less than one-third of reservation of seats for women at different levels of PRIs. Establishment of state finance commissions to recommend measures to improve the finances of panchayats. Establishment of the state election commissions to conduct elections to PRIs. Establishment of district planning committees to prepare development plans for the districts. Preparation of plans for economic development and social justice and their execution concerning the 29 subjects listed in the 11th schedule of the constitution. Establishment of Grama Sabha. Rotation in accordance with the reservation of seats for women and scheduled castes. These are some of the main features of the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1992. Next question, question 21. Describe any four essential conditions for democracy. This is chapter 23, challenges to Indian democracy. The first is political conditions. Under political conditions, we must adopt a constitution and law that vests supreme power in people. The human rights and fundamental rights such as equality, liberty of thought and expression, belief, movement, communication and association must be protected by the constitution. The democratic system has to have universal adult franchise as the basis of electing representatives at various levels of the government. Moreover, Opportunities for political participation of all the citizens, not only in elections at regular intervals, but also in other aspects of the political process have to be made available. A democratic system is strengthened if it maintains an enlightened public opinion in various forms through free press and other communication processes. Political democracy is thus one which incorporates all of the above political traits. Political institutions like political parties and interest and pressure groups must be functional for expressing their needs, demands and grievances. The next is social and ec economic conditions. A democratic system has to ensure that social development reflects the equality of social status. Opportunities for development, social security and social welfare has to be provided. 
citizens must avail opportunities of universal and compulsory education and they must be enabled to utilize the means of economic development these were the conditions for democracy moving on question 22 examine the major causes of environmental degradation this is from chapter 26 environmental degradation and disaster management first we have the social factors the first cause is the growing population population is the greatest resource of any country and it is a major contributory factor for development but it also comes along with environmental degradation poverty poverty is also said to be a cause of environmental degradation you may have seen that poor people use natural resources more than the rich they use them for building their huts for cooking for their food and for meeting any other needs this causes environmental degradation the third is urbanization poor people from villages are moving to towns cities and mega cities to earn their livelihood this has led to unplanned and rapid expansion of cities creating enormous pressure on the infrastructure facilities the fast pace of urbanization has been responsible for the depletion of forests and irrational use of other resources changing lifestyle there has been a remarkable change in the style of living of people this change is visible not among people living in the cities and towns but also among those who live in villages the change in lifestyle of people has enormously increased their level of consumption thus causing damage to the environment then we have economic factors which also cause environmental degradation the first is agricultural development agricultural development is so important for a country but this has been affecting the environment adversely various kinds of farming activities especially directed towards increasing agricultural production have a direct impact on the environment the next is industrialization rapid industrialization has been the foremost contributor to the environmental degradation because of the use of technology this has led to intensive use of resources and energy economic development it's a fact that the pattern of economic development has been creating environmental problems the pace at which economic development has taken place has been putting immense pressure on resources these were some of the factors creating environmental degradation next question question 23 how can a citizen participate in democracy explain this is from chapter 22 people's participation in the democratic process there are several ways in which citizens can participate in the democratic process one of them is public opinion the process of development of public opinion generates thinking promotes awareness invites people's views on issues of public concern the various agencies to express opinions are print media electronic media political parties legislatures educational institutions and elections participation in elections in a democratic people's participation in elections is very important people participate to elect their representatives by voting in elections discussing the working of the government public debates newspaper editorials protest demonstrations public meetings working for a political party and standing as a candidate are all examples of people's participation in a democracy question number 24 describe the programs laid down by gandhi ji in the non cooperation movement this is from chapter 8 indian national movement gandhi ji laid down an elaborate program as a part of the non cooperation movement these are some of them surrender of titles and honorary offices as well as resignation from nominated seats in local bodies refusal to attend official and non official functions gradual withdrawal of children from officially controlled schools and colleges gradual boycott of british courts by lawyers and litigants refusal on the part of the military clerical and laboring classes to offer themselves as recruits for the service in mesopotamia boycott of elections to the legislative council by candidates and voters boycott of foreign goods and national schools and colleges later it was supplemented with promoting swadeshi goods removal of untouchability and promotion of unity 
the next question question 25 explain the various stages of unification of germany after napoleon's defeat in 1815 many germans wanted independent germany germany was a confederation of 39 small states that was led by austria and prussia these states were always at war with one another deterring the economic progress of germany the king of prussia kaiser william i chose a prime minister bismarck to unify germany under the rule of prussia and excluding austria and france completely bismarck was fearless and he believed in an urgent need of unification in germany he started with the modernization of the army defining the parliament and collecting taxes his policy came to be known as blood and iron policy and it earned him the nickname of iron chancellor with this improved army bismarck encouraged the german population of schleswig and holstein to revolt against their ruler denmark the franco prussian war took place which was quite short prussia invaded france and defeated the french napoleon the 3rd abdicated the throne and france was forced to give up alsace and lorraine the remainder of the german states except austria were annexed and joined with germany the unification of germany was complete under kaiser william the 1st soon germany emerged as the leading power in europe building a colonial empire to further the germ the german economic interest and increase the german influence in the world question number 26 examine the factors that affect the distribution of population in india this is from chapter 14 population our greatest resource the density and distribution of population are uneven we can divide the factors which affect the distribution and density of population into two, into two broad categories physical and socio economic under physical factors we have relief climate and soil the areas which are easily accessible are most likely to be inhabited by people that is why we find the plains are densely populated and areas of rugged relief like mountains and plateaus are not climate climatic condition is one of the most important factors which affects the density and distribution of population favorable climate provides convenient living conditions for human beings human beings depend on the quality of soil for agriculture areas of fertile soil can therefore support larger populations under socio economic factors the density and distribution of pollution depend on industrialization and urbanization as we know large number of people residing in areas having industries and they also prefer to live in urban areas towns and cities transport and communication also is an important socio economic factor some parts of the country have better transport and communication facilities and other public utility services than other parts all such areas where public facilities are well developed have a comparatively higher density of population question 27 describe the features of the indian federal system the indian federal system has the following features this is from chapter 15 constitutional values and political system in india one having two sets of government there are two sets of governments created by the indian constitution one is for the entire nation called the union government or the central government and another for the state that is the state government division of powers like other federations both the union and the state governments have a constitutional status and clearly identified area of activity the constitution clearly divides the powers between the two sets of governments so that the center and the states can exercise their powers within the respective spheres of activity we have a written constitution which is supreme it also is the source of power for both the sets of governments both the union and the state government these governments are independent in their sphere of governance lastly independence of judiciary an independent judiciary to interpret the constitution and to maintain its sanctity the supreme court of india has the original jurisdiction to settle disputes between the union and the states moving on question 28 this is a map question 
in the given political outline map of india you are supposed to mark the following first is the k2 peak the k2 peak is here in kashmir there is another picture given in the textbook marking the k2 peak the next is the kaveri river it starts with the western ghats this is the river and it goes into the bay of bengal the third question is to mark the simlipal bio reserve the simlipal bio reserve is here in odisha to mark an important place which is known for its sugarcane production so the satluj ganga plain from punjab to bihar this area here contains 51% of the total area and it amounts to 60% of the total country's total sugarcane production the last question question 29 the mark four places here and we are supposed to identify them these are all ports marked on the west coast of india this is from chapter 14 transport and communication so this port here in gujarat is kandla then this port here in maharashtra is mumbai then in karnataka the port given here that is c is mangalore and lastly the port marked here in kerala is kochi with this we come to the end of this question paper hope it was of use to you if you have any doubts or clarifications please leave them below in the comment section and i'll try to answer it as much as i can thank you for watching thank you for watching this video if you found this video useful please do give it a like request you to share it with your friends who might also benefit from this video if you would like to see more such content please do leave a comment in the comment section below and please do subscribe to watch more such videos thank you again